I'm Steve with Upstream Data, and I'm here to show you some of our Bitcoin mining products for the oil and gas industry, as well as for on-grid mining. So today we got a few sample products that we manufacture up in uh, Lloydminster, Alberta. I'll be showing you a hash generator that's an integrated natural gas gen set with a Bitcoin mine all in one. That product is really for anyone with surplus gas. It could be flare gas, it could be small vent volumes that are being released to atmosphere, or even for generators that are running sites and putting surplus power into the Bitcoin load. So I'm gonna show you guys probably our best selling product. This is a one of two sizes that we build for natural gas applications. So this is a hash generator is the product name. It's basically an integrated natural gas gen set with a Bitcoin mining load center all in one building. And this product is targeted towards oil and gas applications that have stranded gas, so like mature gas fields where you can't get a good gas price. You could plumb that gas into this thing and earn anywhere from four to $15 per MCF, depending on the contract structure. But this is a, it starts with a generator room and I'll walk you inside here. So it's a walk-in building uh, with an integrated gen set. This is a 13 liter engine. It puts out about 205 kilowatt prime. So this room is just for generating power. So you, you plumb the fuel gas in over here where we have an integrated fuel gas system and scrubber. That feeds your engine. It's all set up and load tested in our shop. But once it comes to site, it's as simple as plumbing it in, supplying the right fuel gas pressure around 15 pounds and the rest of our system handles that from there to feed the engine with proper fuel gas pressure. But this room is really just a maintenance and operator access room for the generator. So it's a 10 foot wide building, insulated, a steel lined structure with all the air intake and exhaust required to keep an engine cool. And so there's basically, in this room, there's minimal switch gear. There's just the mains that feed the, the load center side. One of the cool things about this product, if you buy this product for 480 volt applications, because Bitcoin mining is typically 415, but if you're, you, you can use this product to run your site load, for example, uh, run your well, uh, if you have an ESP down hole or any other pumping systems on site, this generator will run your site and all the surplus power will get sent over to this room here, which we'll show you in a second, which all the surplus power mines Bitcoin. So this can be a, a dedicated Bitcoin mining product. So all it does all day long is consume gas, generates Bitcoin and generates much more than you'll earn on the grid or off like a midstream sale off a contract to a, to sales to a pipeline. Anywhere from, you know, if, if, you're, if you're selling power to upstream data, for example, we'll pay you about $4 per MCF equivalent for your gas. If you're mining Bitcoin yourself and you invest in the actual miners that are on this side, you can earn upwards of $15 per MCF, depending on what miners you put in. If you're operating this unit, we make this room nice and spacious, especially, you know, this is a system that can go in cold weather. We're based in Canada, so it's a nice walk-in building. So when you're servicing the engine or doing maintenance or anything, you're in a nice environment, not exposed to the elements. Normal engine control panel, we use Dynagens. Some of our customers use deep sea controllers. This we actually tie into our load sync control system, which is on the other side. And that basically reads the engine data coming out of the engine controller into our main brain, if you will, that will automate your entire product, like your entire rig. It automates the mining side to keep the mining load balanced with what's available by the generator. So if you're, if you're running the generator to power a site, the Bitcoin load is basically synchronized with what's available from the generator. So if the, if the site load demands more power because you're running pumps or downhole pumps like ESPs, and all of a sudden you have new pumps come online, maybe it's a transfer pump or whatever your facility might be running, that load controller will actually drop the Bitcoin load so that the engine is always, call it protected, and synchronized so that it always has power available to run your site. That's if it's an application where it's, it's running a site load. If it's a dedicated Bitcoin load, 
Sometimes you'll have, you know, loss of fuel gas. You could have fuel gas freezing off on your lines if your lines aren't heat traced, if it's in cold weather. Or you could have some other condition that may be a bad slug of gas that your engine can't pull the load for a brief period of time and that load controller will shed the load basically real time to keep this engine always running and optimized. And in this section, really, I mean, this is normally where operators will come in and check the engine. They'll, if there's any alarms on the engine control panel, they can see that here. There's basically like day tanks for oil. All the fuel gas is basically built into the system. So we plumb the fuel gas into this scrubber here, which is really just the, your end of the line spot for any liquids that come into, that could come into your generator to knock that out. And there's your normal like fuel gas pressure gauges and stuff to check and just you know, uh, when there's any troubleshooting events going on to see, see what's happening. And we also have integrated pressure sensors that also tie into the load sink controller. So you can see remotely what's going on before you come to site. So you have a better idea of what you might need to do, or if you have a contractor that has to come out and do a maintenance event, they are better prepared for what's happening. But more or less, it comes fully integrated with all the fuel gas system. It's already installed. Pressure regulation with venting, a uh, vent port to the external of the building. And yeah, this room doesn't get much simpler. It's just a, an enclosure for a generator. And we have like sound attenuation attachments. If it's next to residents, you know, within 500 meters or whatever the allowance might be that can also be built into this thing to keep this quiet. That's really all this room is for. It's just for coming in and servicing, maintaining the engine. The front access door here, which is normally closed, you can, like if you have a major overhaul event, like where you have to swap the generator out, you can actually just pull the generator right through that maintenance access door, put in a new one. That's if you're just doing a hot swap. If, you're, if you need to overhaul the engine and you just need, or, or there are, there's a part that needs replacement, like the alternator at the end that's generating the power, you can also just pick that out and pull it through the building for, for easy maintenance. So the design is really just a quality of life thing for the operator and for the mechanics and contractors that are taking care of the engine and taking care of the asset. Uh, this is a 10 foot by 16 foot hash generator with a 200 kilowatt genset integrated. So I showed you the generator room. This is the other room in the building. This is the room that's normally gonna be locked. Third party contractors, service people aren't normally gonna have access to this room because this is where all the expensive Bitcoin mining machines are racked up. We don't have any machines in here at the conference, but this this is really the, the, the room with all the controls and, and this is where all the magic happens, if you will. So I'll just step inside. We have a design that's built for all weather. So there's a lot of thought that goes into this, but we have, basically booster fans that push air in from, there's, there's a fan in this, in this side and in this side, and then above the fans is a minor rack and a minor rack for the Bitcoin machines. The idea here is that the fans are in the cold side of the airflow. They're not on the hot side of the mining machines. And, that, and they, push, they push air into the building. They're, they're supply fans. They're not exhaust fans. So the building always operates on positive static pressure which is really important in case there's any breach in the building anywhere if you have an if you have a negative pressure building with exhaust fans sucking air out of the building if you have any breach whatsoever in your filters or anything like that if you're in a cold environment especially you'll get snow suck through that filtration and blow up into your miners and short out boards and it's a lot of costly maintenance so one way we deal with that by having the airflow come in low, rise up and exit out high above, like the air is exiting, the hot air is exiting above the air intake. That allows you to, on the outside, there's these attachments that allow you to recirculate the heat through just sliding open a, effectively like a little gate that dumps the heat back into the intake. That's really important. A lot of people just completely overlie that because if you're trying to, like we are, trying to build a reliable Bitcoin mining load center for all weather, you need the ability to put the heat back into the intake for cold weather. If you don't do that, you're gonna have your intakes, your filters will kick off with snow, 
with you know hoar frost in icy conditions they'll they'll kick off with ice because it's constantly supplying air through that filter and so what what this design allows for is the heat can be recirculated so in cold weather you can maintain a reasonable temperature in this room which is good for the health of the of the miner machines that are wrapped up here and it also prevents all the snow that will build up on your intakes from happening it basically pre-melts the snow whether it's West Texas, where you have major heating issues, like over overheating issues, that's resolved with the really high powered fans on the intake, pushing air in and having that positive air pressure cool the miners. And then if it's in the winter, if it's maybe, maybe it's in Wyoming and you have, uh, the winter comes along, it's gonna work really well in winter and summer. And that's, that's, a, that's a big part of the design. The other stuff in this room is, uh, there's basically a VFD panel that along with the miners, the PDUs, the power distribution units that power the miners, these are smart PDUs, and the generator, our load sync controller uh, through this touch screen, it basically automates everything. So it's watching the engine. If there's any issues with the engine, it'll alarm the owner. Uh, it might say the engine's uh, overheating uh, and it needs, uh, maybe the operator left the intake loaders closed. They'll be alarmed for that reason and can do preventative maintenance before it comes to make the problem. You can remotely start and stop your engine. You can remotely see everything that your engine's doing. Phase voltage, phase average, uh, engine coolant temp, oil temp, oil pressure, all that stuff is coming into this controller. You can access all that remotely and that really helps with uh, effectively keeping the system reliability high and, and on-site maintenance love like we want to have extremely reliable system you know we don't want to impact uptime there's off-grid oil field lighting you're always going to have you know issues to deal with that you don't have to deal with on the grid such as fuel gas quality fuel gas supply so the control system is really about optimizing outside of that it's also a dual it's like dual acting as a minor management tool so it tells you which miners are running hot which ones might need to be looked at on the next pm run it can automate uh, and manage mining frequency like clocking to under clock or over clock the miner based on you know user needs whether it's environmental issues that you're want to under clock or in hotter weather or if it's uh, or if you just want to overclock in general that can all be done through this system without any third party software was fired. That's the brain that, that basically automates the load of the system so that if this is running on a site that's powering your facility, say instead of renting a genset from a rental company, you own or renting this unit, you're running it, you're using the unit to run your site. You're also mining Bitcoin at the same time with all the surplus power you have available. And then our controller prevents the surplus power demand from the mining machine from overloading the engine, which is what I was serving up on to explaining earlier. So basically, it, it, if there was a condition in that which that engine couldn't power everything because you're starting to overload it with site loads and the Bitcoin load, this controller will shed the Bitcoin load rapidly, depending on the set points you want. Like it, it'll shut it down in sequence or it'll turn it all off immediately in order to keep the engine running. Please feel free to reach out. I'm Steve at Upstream Data. Uh, you can reach us at upstreamdata.com.